what they gave us on Monday is even more concerning and should be concerning to all parents and all people of California because of what they're asking to do. Um, the first seven pages of it, and you can find all of this information on sb18.info, so sb18.info, and that gets you to the Voice for Choice advocacy page, and we have on there the draft uh, amendments, we have our legislative packet and sort of flyers explaining why this is not a good bill, why we don't support it. Um, the, the amendments to the bill, they basically took each of those seven sections and put bullet points, 10 bullet points about 10 bullet points under each, going through what the child's rights are under each of those things. And it's actually, I mean, to me, I was reading those seven pages of the bill, and it really is, it's almost crazy what they've done. It, the, the sections include things that are very extreme or things that are already right. So, you know, one example is, the children have the right to non-structured play. So in other words, children are allowed to play. Children have the right, sorry, it's the right to access. So, and that's, we'll talk about that word access. Um, play, well, yeah, I, you know, I, <laughs> I think all children have the right to play. Like, we, do we need that in a, in a law? Things like children have the right to access firefighters, emergency responders, and, and, uh, and law enforcement officials. And it's kind of like, Okay, yes. Like, it, I, I, I still have to work out. I went through it and I was like, is this a law enforcement bill? Is this a penal code bill? Is this an education bill? Is this a health care bill? Is this a you know, welfare bill? Like, it, it's not clear what they're exactly trying to do. Um, there are some interesting pieces, uh, other than the two that I, just, that I just mentioned. But, you know, one of them is it definitely starts before birth, which is interesting because the Democrats very much believe birth starts at day zero. I mean, a child's right, you know, a child's life starts at day zero after it's born. So that's an interesting one for Democrats to put in. Um, there's also um, things that are that are that are hard to quantify or hard to know how they'll oversee them. So, for example, it also says that. The right for children's parents to obtain employment opportunities that promote a healthy balance between work and life, or the right of a child's parent to be paid a living wage. Well, we have minimum wage in California, but how? Who's going to enforce that? So, you know, if 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 it's a right of a child or the child's parents, like is the parent going to sue a company because they didn't give them a healthy work-life balance? Like, it's it just, it, it's a huge, bit. I mean, it has huge ramifications on all different aspects. So it makes me think that if you don't have a job, you don't get to raise your children. Well, and that's the other piece of this. So the other piece was, okay, so they, they made it very clear. The legislative director, he gave it to me. He said, I just want you to know that we've put the word access in there everywhere. And that is so that it's voluntary, not mandatory, because that was one of our complaints was, you know, you're going to come up with this list of things, and suddenly all of our kids have to go to preschool, or all of our kids have to go, um, you know, have to spend three hours playing a day, or all of our kids are only allowed to watch half an hour of TV a day. You know, those, those you know, and, and I was just like, that is not okay. The parents, I mean, we have a fundamental right in in, under the Supreme Court to raise our children as we see fit. And we are the ones that are there that should be able to provide them shelter, food, sustenance, education, religious education, whatever we want to. That is up to a parent, and that's been upheld in the Supreme Court. So the interesting thing about this is if the child has the right to access these things, that means the parents, if they don't give that child that, are then in jeopardy of losing that child, it seems. Or once the child gets older, which has happened in Sweden, that the child starts suing the parents. And I can see this, you know, the way it's written right now, an example I gave to somebody yesterday was, okay, so you have a 14-year-old kid who hasn't done their homework, hasn't tidied their room, and you say to them, you are staying in your room until you have tidied up your room and you've done your homework. Fair statement. But the kid can come back and say, nope, I have the right to non-structured play. I am going out in the backyard and playing, and I will sue you if you, if you make me do my homework. 
you know, and it, it, it or I'm going to call CPS. I'm going to call CPS and they're going to take me away and I'm going to be out of this house. Well, you know, a 14-year-old child doesn't understand what CPS and being out of this house and being in foster care means and being, you know, so it just is very, very, very concerning. The other piece is they have a, they have a section at the very end, which was also pointed out to me, that they put in, especially because we were complaining that, you know, it may limit parents' rights, which says nothing in this section shall be interpreted to limit a parent's right under state or federal law. There is no statute, state or federally, that is a parental rights statute. So there is actually no law that gives parents rights. There, I mean, there are, there are laws that take away parents' rights. You know, one of the things we've said is this is completely unnecessary because the extreme cases where parents are not doing what they should be doing or are not safe for their children, those extreme cases have been taken care of with the laws we have in place. So, you know, physical sexual abuse, truancy, um, those types of things are, are, have been taken care of already. Most parents, the majority of parents, do not fall into that, that realm of things. And so, you know, to me, it, it, it's saying that you have parents' rights, but parents' rights under state or federal law, there are no laws. There is not a parental rights amendment to our Constitution. There isn't a parental rights law act. So for them to say that, basically, in my mind, means nothing, which, you know, so you have the first seven pages of this bill, and I really, anybody who is listening to this, I really encourage you, and even if you're not in California, there's a statement in here that they want to make this in California and then run with it in the rest of the country. So everyone in the U.S. should be incredibly concerned about this bill in California, because if it gets passed in California, your state is next. Um, and and they, I mean, it says it in here. It says it in this bill. It says that that is their plan, is that it's going from, it's going to be an example to other, to other states. Um, and, and so I would say everybody should read this. We have the draft amendments on our website, again, sb18.info. Um, the other concerning thing is, so you have these first seven pages of all of this stuff that children have rights to. And then you get into what they're actually asking the legislature to do. And what they're asking the legislature to do in effect, is just set up a committee of nine assembly members and nine senators to determine to, or to develop California's promise to its children and youth. And it's a blueprint, I'll read it to you, it's a blueprint for the care and welfare of children and youth in various contexts, including but not limited to health care, nutrition, homeless assistance, education, and foster care. And, this is, and then it says, and to serve as an example to other states by raising the standard of living for California's children. And so, you know, that's all they're asking. So what they're actually asking is still very benign. I feel there's something fishy going on because they don't actually need to have this whole bill go through in order for a committee to set up. The Senate pro tem and the uh, Assembly speaker can set, up a, can set up committees. Many committees get established every year. For different, for different, you know, for doing research or investigation into into certain um, certain types of things, and so you know that has not been set up. That's what they're asking to set up. So it just seems strange that they would have a bill to set that up. Um, but they also, more fold above that, give the real reason for this bill, and that is that they want a tax overhaul. And when we met with um, Common Sense Kids Action in January. Um, they made it very clear, and their lobbyists made it very clear that this, what they want to do for California's kids, and specifically zero to five-year-old kids, what they want to do will cost about 25 to $30 billion. Oh, my God. California's budget does not have that. We don't have that in our budget to, to give to California's children just like that. And so they are very – they made it clear in that meeting, and they've now put it into this, um, these amendments that what they want to do is a complete tax code overhaul. And I agree that there are pieces of our tax code that are outdated, but putting tax code overall under the guise of a children's bill of rights and bettering our children's welfare is not fair. That's not, that's not being transparent. Um, you know, and the two, the two or three sectors, and this is where you know, not only parents should be concerned, everyone should be concerned, especially the elderly, especially business owners, because they're, they're talking about Prop 13. 
And Prop 13, and just for anyone who's not familiar with it, Prop 13 was put through in 1978 in California, and it basically kept property taxes at a at a very minimal increase because what was happening in the 70s was people had bought their houses for much less. Their houses suddenly appreciated through the booms, and they were now had tax assessments um, and property taxes that were way bigger than they could even afford. So they could pay their mortgage, but they couldn't pay their taxes. And so Prop 13 was passed in order to kind of minimize that, and it can only go up by 2%. There are places, for example, the elderly who have had their own their houses for many years, and especially in California, especially in areas like L.A. and and San Francisco areas, where you know the housing boom has just gone up. And so if Prop 13 were, were manipulated, they would be it at risk for being kicked out of their houses. But the other place that they're really talking about is commercial real estate, because commercial real estate goes from one family or one trust to another or one corporation. Um, the corporation owns it. And so big, big you know, real estate development uh, people have been able to keep taxes low. The thing is, if you raise those taxes, it's not the developer or the real estate owner that's going to pay them. It's the people who lease those properties because most commercial property is leased. So it's the people, you know, your deli, your, you know, your people, if you walk down Main Street, all of those properties or most of them are leased properties. So it's those people that are going to be hurting because it's going to be completely passed on to them, the, the increase in pricing. And so, you know, everybody should be worried about this. The other place that they've mentioned, actually mentioned in the bill, is the new new economic sector. So, you know, gray markets or or uh, online businesses that are that they're not evading taxes. There's just no laws that that are in place that they have to pay taxes because they weren't in place. You know, they, when people were creating the tax code, they didn't think about that. Um, but so there are all of these these other entities that should be very, very concerned with this Children's Bill of Rights, even if they have nothing to do with children. Well, this sounds um, like something, you know, out of the New World Order thing where they want to, you know, so turn all of the people into, you know, robots. communities and get rid of the cars and get rid of shopping downtown. It kind of sounds kind of like in line with that. It's definitely Orwellian. I mean, I will absolutely go that far. I mean, it, you read you read the Bill of Rights and what rights they're giving children or saying that children have access to, which basically says that parents, if parents don't give them that and the child wants it or the child should have it because the state thinks they should have it, it's taking it away. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, the tax piece of it is, you know, it's their way. I get that they want the funding for it, and I get, you know, one of the things to note is that education and uh, our judicial system, over the years, every other special interest has put forward an a initiative to get more money um, appropriated to it or apportioned to it in the budget. Education and our judicial system are two that have not done that, and so they always get sort of whatever's left at the bottom of the bucket. Which is why we're forty part of why we're forty second in the country in our in our per pupil spending for education. But you know, when I look at it and I look at what they want to do, I, you know, they say they want to make life better and they want kids to go further. Well, we already have systems in place, and I'm going to bring up AB fifteen twenty, which is a a bill that was introduced by Autumn Bur Assembly Member Autumn Burke, 